Pop OS 20.04 is out and it is surprisingly receiving a lot of positive response. Pop OS released this version along with major releases from top distros like Ubuntu 20.04, Fedora 32 and Manjaro 20. But Pop OS 20.04 is absolutely crushing it in the Linux scene. People are switching to this distro in huge numbers and it's getting tremendous acclamation from the community. So what exactly is happening here? Is the new Pop OS really that good? I installed the brand new Pop OS to find out and guess what? It is good. And it overcomes one major issue that the new Ubuntu has, resulting in better performance, better usability and overall a better computing experience. So in this video, we'll be checking out the new Pop OS 20.04 LTS. How it performs, how stable and usable it is, what kind of experience you get out of it and the big reason people are dumping their long time distros in favor of Pop. This is Linux Techs. Let's start off with the user interface. Out of the box, Pop OS looks gorgeous. The theme, the color scheme, the icons, the wallpaper, everything you see here has been custom made for Pop OS and it's all just so good to look at. In fact, when Pop OS was initially released, it was this look that made it so famous. Pop OS uses a heavily themed GNOME desktop environment. We get the latest version that is GNOME 3.36 here. The desktop is very clean and is great for distraction free work. I love Linux distros which focus on aesthetics, but I don't like it when they become too glittery and shiny. Pop OS manages to look beautiful while maintaining simplicity. Pop OS looks specially elegant on laptops. It comes with an interesting feature here. You can enable tile windows using this little icon. This is very useful and has the potential to boost productivity heavily. This is not particularly useful for everybody, but those of us who use multiple applications at the same time are going to benefit a lot, especially software developers and students. Whenever you open a new application, the screen real estate is shared between the running apps. To give you an example of how this can be used, you can watch a coding tutorial on Chrome, write code on Atom Editor and see the resulting web page on Firefox all at the same time without the hassle of minimizing and hiding any app. This is so much faster and better. Pop OS is really streamlined in many ways. But there are a couple of things which I didn't like here in the user interface department. It would have been better if the dash was on the desktop like this instead of an empty desktop. It will be much more convenient to launch our favorite apps with a single click. You need to install an extension called dash to dock to correct this. Install instructions are given in the description below. This is more of a user preference matter so I'm not gonna count this as a con. Window controls are another important thing that's missing here. When the dock is not visible all the time, a minimize button becomes important. Let's consider you are watching a video and someone suddenly comes in your room. There is no way to quickly minimize the window. You need to install GNOME Tweak tool to enable those buttons. It takes 3 minutes to do it but still, this is something that should be there out of the box. Moving on. Pop OS comes with an interesting set of wallpapers. Along with some pop branding wallpapers, some natural shots, there are these trippy cartoony ones which are really good to look at. They give a character to the desktop. I really like these images. They stand out and make the desktop look very unique. Overall, in the user interface department, Pop OS 20.04 scores top points. In a room full of computers, a computer running Pop OS will shine bright. Next, let's have a look at the stability and the usability of the new Pop OS. Pop OS 20.04 is a long-term support version which will be supported for the next 5 years. It is based on the solid Ubuntu base, so it is a very dependable operating system. Pop OS is made by System76, which is the biggest name in consumer hardware for Linux users. So Pop OS is a very high quality product, you feel it right away. Pop OS has good commercial backing and support. While many distros today are becoming more and more usable by the general public, Pop OS focuses heavily on software developers, programmers, scientists, engineers and technical students. But that does not mean Pop cannot be used for other things like gaming and normal home use. No sir. It just means you don't get games, music player and other general purpose software out of the box. The bare essentials and LibreOffice are here. You can install additional software easily from the Pop shop. Pop OS is very clean. It is based on Ubuntu LTS, so it is very solid and will be supported for the next 5 years. Pop OS provides multiple ISO files with pre-installed drivers based on your hardware. 
so it is very easy to install and configure the OS. You also get a bloat-free lean system on which you can install the apps that you need. This creates a very optimized system with only the applications that you need. I'm a big fan of this approach. Next up, let's have a look at the performance and the software availability of Pop OS. I have combined these two categories specifically because Pop provides a huge advantage over Ubuntu in these two categories. Particularly, the format in which software is delivered on Pop OS positively impacts the performance in a huge way when compared to the performance of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. You already know how Ubuntu is aggressively pushing Snap apps to its users in the latest 20.04 LTS version. You can still install traditional app packages, but in the front page in the software store and when you search for software, the Snap version will be prioritized. Now Snaps have their advantages. They might also become the default way of software delivery in the far future, but right now, they are not at all viable for a huge portion of Linux users. See, performance-wise, snaps are terrible at the moment. They have very bad startup times, especially the initial startup. They are very bulky and this takes a lot of time for these apps to show up on the screen after you have clicked on them. Even on a mid-range laptop that is just 4-5 to five years old, the performance of snaps can be unbearable, while the traditional app packages will perform just fine. This huge performance difference between the same software, packaged in two different formats, has caused many long-time Ubuntu users to hate the new Ubuntu and even abandon it. Enter PopOS 20.04 When PopOS came out with its initial release, it didn't offer anything new or innovative on top of Ubuntu except for a shiny interface. It was the same GNOME desktop on top of the same Ubuntu core. But today, PopOS has become the better Ubuntu. Today, it brings to you a stable, dependable computing without the whole snap revolution. The software store on Pop is called Pop Shop and it allows you to download any software you want in three different formats. You have Snap, Flatpak and the good old app package. I installed the same software as a Snap and an app package. The app version not only has significantly better startup time but also comparatively better performance. Some software like Kdenlai run fine in the app format on my computer, but run the same app as a snap and my computer starts lagging, the fans go on overdrive and finally, the app crashes. Again, I really appreciate what snaps are bringing to the table, I really do. Because of snaps, many major software have come to Linux and I know many more will. But Ubuntu should provide an easy switch to choose the software format. Being based on Ubuntu gives Pop access to its huge software repositories. You can install pretty much anything and everything you need in a very fast, convenient and secure way. And if you choose to try out some snaps or flat packs, you can do that easily too. This is the true freedom of using Linux. Pop OS is very responsive and since it comes with GNOME 3.36, you get a fluid desktop. For those of you who have an Nvidia GPU, Pop OS provides a separate ISO file. With this, you get the best possible performance on your hardware out of the box. Now let's have a look at gaming on the new Pop OS. Steam officially supports Ubuntu, and since Pop OS is basically Ubuntu under the hood, Steam and Steam games run fine here. All the games are tested and optimized for this system. Now with Steam's Proton feature, more than 6500 Windows exclusive games have become playable on Linux. Now you don't need to go through the hassle of configuring Wine or Play on Linux to enjoy Windows exclusive games on Linux. With Proton, you can directly start playing the game after installing it from Steam. This is really great for people who are still using Windows just for gaming. Now those people can make the switch to Linux, and Pop OS especially will be a great system for gaming on Linux. And since the GPU drivers for Nvidia, AMD and Intel graphics are installed and available out of the box, you can expect the best possible gaming experience here. Community support has always been crucial in the Linux scene. Whenever you have any problems or need help with pretty much anything, it's the amazing members of this community that help us out. Pop OS has a growing community. It has forums rich with useful troubleshooting and helpful content both for beginners and experienced users. And with that, the how-tos and guides written for Ubuntu are also 100% applicable for Pop OS. And because of the vast user base of Ubuntu, it has a huge amount of community provided support material like troubleshooting guides, how-to articles, solutions to frequently faced issues and more. 
So now on PopOS, the solution to any issues you might face is just a Google search away. PopOS has a very simple installation. It provides two types of ISO files based on your GPU model. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, download the NVIDIA file and if you have an AMD or Intel integrated, download the other one. These files have the necessary drivers pre-installed on them. The installation is easy and has beginner friendly steps. The whole thing takes around 15 minutes. Personally, I never really saw PopOS as anything more than a heavily themed version of Ubuntu. I did like the fact that it was closer to pure GNOME than Ubuntu. But with PopOS 20.04 LTS, I have a much higher opinion of it. Ubuntu has always been a great Linux distro. The number of people who use Linux on their computers as their daily driver increased significantly because of Ubuntu. It made Linux accessible and usable for everybody. Even today, Ubuntu is a great option for many people. But PopOS is better in some ways. The performance issue that the new Ubuntu might cause due to snap apps can be easily overcome here in PopOS. And you don't even need to have intricate knowledge of the inner mechanics or even open a terminal to do so. These are simpler things that should have been taken care of on Ubuntu. Although I was not happy when Ubuntu ditched Unity in favor of GNOME, I didn't like the Unity reminiscent layout that was designed in GNOME. It's gone. It's over. Move on. Is wallowing in the memory of Unity by using a similar desktop really necessary? PopOS gives you vanilla GNOME with branding theme, which looks good and can be customized easily. The new PopOS clearly justifies all the attention and love it is getting. It's dependable, looks fantastic and is really fun to use. Give it a try. The download link is given in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, do consider subscribing to my channel. Next up, check out my review of Ubuntu DDE, which is a new, downright stunning Linux distro. This is Linux Tech. see you in the next one.